Ah, there you go, mate. Glass of house red. Oh, cheers. You're very good health. Here, you still in touch with Kev? No, not so much. Oh, pity. He's gone right off the radar. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Anyway, I hear you're looking for a holiday, is that right? Something like that, yeah. Has it all got a bit hot for you in London, is that it? No. Just, uh, fancy a change. Heard you've been ill, mate. You are looking a bit peaky, I've got to say. A bit worn. Life's caught up with me, I guess. Well, I hope it's not serious. The old man in the sea. The old man in the big sea. <laughs> oh, sorry to hear it. What's this then, uh, one last big job? Maybe. All right, then. Well, take your pick of these. How's about this for a bit of sun? An old friend of Ray Maton, what's him tracking down? Uh, last seen on some Spanish island. He's led the lab. Yeah, how'd you say that? Not interested. I don't like the food. <laughs> All right. Uh, he's one on the south coast. It's Portsmouth, just down the A3, mate. Some tree huggers planning to hijack this drilling mission to uh, Antarctica. Next, next, next. All right. Ah, this is a juicy one right here. <laughs> El Paso, Texas. Got some former miner locked up in a psych ward. Apparently, there was this incident there last summer. He's been blabbing about how some secret government agency were involved. Well, it sounds like the crazy talking to me, but seems a new administration out there could do without the hassle. Wants his mouth shut in for good. How many times? I don't want client specifics. All right, all right. All right, let's have a look. Oh. How do you feel about coppers? <laughs> How do you think I feel about them? <laughs> yeah, I thought you might say that. Think this one might suit you. You ever been to Italy? Not since the war. Tell me more. Bologna. Here's the mark. It's uh, Police Superintendent Ferrari. Word is, make it look ambiguous. The client will take it from there. Well, I better pack me bags. That's what I like to hear, Mr. Beckman. Usual protocol. Well, you know the drill. Hmm. Cheers. And so, take care, mate. Nice seeing you. Of course, this is uh, pork and beef. Not people. The gargoyles have incredibly canine faces. Tonto, darling, is that you? This is Roman. This is Mosaic. Is that what it? Is that what it looks like, Don? Well, what does it look like to you? Looks like they're eating that that poor fella. You hear something from down the well—a sort of gibbering sort of sound. Looks like there's a sort of masonic marking. The, the cartographer's arms have been carved out. Can I do a sleight of hand roll to try and take his signet ring off? Julia, I, I don't know where she is. She's, she's not in her room. She's, she's gone. The Apocalypse Players present Il Portico di San Luca A Call of Cthulhu scenario by Dan Wheeler With Dominic Allen as Robert Hyde, retired chemist Joseph Chance as Nicholas Devere theatre critic perennial guest star Jeannie Spark as Sharon Clifford widowed housewife and Dan Wheeler as your keeper of arcane law Part 3 Private Business Julia, she, she's not there. I, I don't know where she is. She's she's not in her room. She's she's gone or yeah, she's I I don't know where she is. Julia Niccolo. What? But she was just here. I mean, we saw her. We saw her nearly go in the door. Well, hang on, mate. Is her stuff still there? 
Yeah, yeah, everything's everything's there. She's just she's just not there. She's not in the bathroom. I'm sure she's all right. I'm she's she's just maybe gone for a walk or a a sit down outside. Gone for a walk. She 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 said she needed to be in the cool. She said she wanted to get out of the sun. Oh. I said so, so, something something's happened to her. Maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe she uh, maybe she was taken or uh, what? Taken? I don't know. And Niccolo. No, no, Don. I'm sure sure not. Wait, 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 wait. Are you saying? Uh, I look at Robert, meaningfully, and I say, "Are you saying that she's disappeared?" And I and I stare at Robert. Yeah, I'm saying she's disappeared. All right, calm down. We need to we need to work sensibly on this. Uh, Sharon's absolutely right. We mustn't jump to conclusions. We must check all the rooms, not just yours, Don. Julia might have felt unwell and... Uh, so, so something, something's happened to her. Maybe uh, she's been kidnapped by the by the fascists or something. Niccolo! Oh, you mean political? Is that what you're thinking? I, I, I don't know. Um, maybe. Well, calm down. Everyone needs to calm down. You've got to think rationally in these situations. I know it's difficult, but if she was kidnapped by someone, by an organisation, they would leave a note. They want the money. Yes, that's easy. That's true. But 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 it's just, it's just that she was she was Nicolo. Wait wait wait! Don't don't. And I I I actually go over to him on that. I say, no need for Nicolo. Let's keep this between us. Is she pregnant? And he's sort of taken aback and says, No, why? Why would you ask that? Well, she was feeling the heat. I couldn't help but notice. I just wondered. I wasn't jumping to conclusions. I just wondered. Is there any reason she'd leave you in a hurry? No, of course not. Mm. It does happen in love affairs. I'm so sorry, but I've been there. I'm sorry to even suggest it. Listen, darling, listen, darling. It's going to be fine. Wait a minute. Yes, Robert? Forgive me for being a suspicious person. I'll go and speak to Niccolo. Try and get a measure of his state. And if he seems very calm, maybe we can involve him in this. Robert, do you think the other two left as well? Well, let's not jump. Let's not jump to conclusions. Let's, you know, th- those two. Well, if something bad was going to happen, she should have seen it coming, shouldn't she? <laughs> well, Crystal. Sharp and take a breath on my part. I think it's absolutely fine. Julia's probably just gone to get some fresh air. She's sat under a tree somewhere and she'll be walking around the corner and in the door in a minute or two. In the meantime, let's not panic. Let's check all around the house. Right, someone needs to check all the rooms upstairs. Someone should check down here and we should probably try and out see if she's gone down to the cellar. We said we might do that this afternoon. Maybe she's gone down there. Why Why would she Why would she go to the cellar? We need, we need to call the police. We need... To- we need to go on the- well, let's check the house before we do anything else. Let's let's check the surroundings before we we get anyone else involved. Give me five minutes to talk to Nicola. All right. I think it's a good idea. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, Sharon, sh- should we go and check the rooms upstairs? Yeah, I'll come with you. I'll come with you, Don. A note, and perhaps a note was left. We we'll just give him give him a once over. I, I, we, but I think we got to get the police. We got to get the police involved. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Let's let's open all the doors, look in all the rooms before we do anything else. All right. Um, Come on. It's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. All right. So you got the stairs together, and uh, he says, "Which end? Which end do you want to start at?" Well, I'll start at the other end. You start at this end, and we'll meet in the middle. Okay. As, the, as, as they're heading upstairs, I think I, I turn to Robert and I say, just to talk, yes? Just to talk, talk, darling. I think, Nicholas, perhaps you're on the same wavelength as I. Do you trust that man? He gives a very good performance, does he not? Uh, as the other two get to the top of the stairs, I, I get really close to you and I say, I don't know what's going on here, but it's not normal, is it? So Don goes to the, the sort of far left, which is Robert Robert's room, I think, and starts sort of looking around in there. What what might he find in there, um, Robert? Have you got your briefcase on you, for example, or have you left it in the room? Hmm. That's a good question. I think I've probably left it in the room. Yeah, I've probably left it in the room. 
looking for Julia rather than anything else. But is it a locking briefcase? I mean, if he... Uh, yeah, for sure. Fine, okay. And is there anything that he might find in Nicholas's room? Just your suitcase and your stuff? Is there anything, if he was going through stuff, anything he might find that I should know about? Um, he'd find a dog bowl <laughs> with dog food <laughs> and uh, a small bowl laid out for water. Jesus Christ. And the, win- the window open. Okay, we'll deal with that in a minute. <laughs> so, Sharon, uh, I don't know how, how much you're looking around, but the first room you get to is your own room. Lovely. There is, there's no one in there. I think you find that out pretty quickly. And the next room is uh, the room that was Barbara and Crystal's room. <laughs> Dan, might, might I add that I think that first room almost certainly, and this is, this is perhaps unfair of me to say this because it's not my character, but that first room is like a blur for Sharon maybe because all she can think about is Don's buttocks as he was walking away. Because like he's really attractive, right? He certainly is, yeah. Uh, and I think there was that sort of moment where she'd said, let's split up, and then he, she just sees him going away, and it's like, it's this perfect 10 out of 10. I mean, she didn't hesitate when he said, you know, come upstairs with me, Sharon. Right, it's, it was all going so well, and now you did the honourable thing, as I noticed, and I just wanted to just like underscore the fact that... Like two peaches in a leotard. Oh, Those 70s jeans guys, they were, they were like adverts, right? For guys' bums. I mean, oh. that's, what I'm saying. that's what I'm saying. I'm just putting it in there. Sharon hasn't got an enormous imagination but Don's jeans leave nothing to any kind of imagination <laughs> absolutely not no you can pretty much see what he had for breakfast yeah his slightly bell bottom jeans and his uh, his lovely sort of check jacket which I think oh, God. is really really tight cut oh. and his shirt he's got a shirt with a big 70s collar Ooh. and his it just sort of pops open at the buttons mm. not because he's fat but because his his chest is so broad nice straining a little bit of lovely sort of curly dark hair popping out popping out of his oh just quite he's quite a hairy man anyway all the more to keep you warm at night i would say mm. god it's as hot as a 70s nightclub this description <laughs> yeah. so the next room you come to is barbara and crystal's room um there's there's no one in there Um, I don't know whether you want to take this opportunity to have a little look around or anything. Yes, I absolutely do. Is it neat and tidy? It's really, it's really neat and tidy. Um, Very neat and tidy. Not like they left in a hurry. Well, I guess it's hard to say because obviously they, they took all their stuff with them. So it's, it's, uh, it, there's two twin beds. They look like they've been uh, slept in, but then sort of quickly, like quickly remade, not properly remade. And I don't know whether you're sort of looking around for anything that they might have left behind or... Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, you you check, obviously, we're looking for Julia first and foremost. Have a look on the bed. She's not on the bed. She's not on the floor. No. Maybe look in the wardrobe, not in there. Nothing in the wardrobe. But then I think you get down on the floor and you maybe look under the bed. Mm Mm-hmm. There's, there is, uh, like, a, a sock under the bed as if maybe they did leave in a bit of a hurry. As if maybe they didn't do a thorough check like you're doing now. Do you look anywhere else? Yeah, I think I might pull back the bed sheets and have a look in the bed, under the pillows. Nothing under the pillows, nothing in the beds. Have a good look inside the wardrobe, check the shelves on top of the rail and... There's nothing in the wardrobe, but if you're checking that thoroughly and you're looking in the um, you look in the drawers, there is a, like a little Gideon's Bible in one of the chests of drawers. Ah, yes. Mm. I would pick that up and just give it a... <laughs> so in that book there are words underlined with like um, an eyeliner pencil oh. as if it was the first thing that someone could find sort of lots of words okay but like in sort of kind of individual words or pairs of words and the words that have been underlined are things like unsafe leave and festival mm. Cool. <laughs> that kind of thing. Okay. But there's nothing else in this room. Okay. I'd like to take that with me if I can. Sure. Great. Uh, let's see what's happening downstairs. I don't know what's going on here, but it's not normal, is it? I have to say, I'm finding it very hard to be objective. Well, that whole crystal thing... That gave me the willies, to be honest, yeah. It's a set-up, isn't it? A set-up? 
you think this is a scam? I used to drink at the Coach and Horses. I don't know what that is. I know Ronnie Cray's cousin. Good for you, I say, with a blank expression. I don't sneer, but I do just look straight at your blank eyes. I've never been to the Coach and Horses in my life. I think I met you there. That must be someone else. All right. I might be wrong. Must be. I've got one of those faces. I'm sure you do. Listen, whatever's going on, I just thought you might have some private business. And if that involves Niccolo, that's fine by me. I don't want any trouble. No, 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 you misunderstand me. I just... I just don't trust him a hundred percent. No, neither do, I, neither do I. And I don't buy, buy this whole disappearance thing. Look at the way they were touching each other. You saw that. They're into each other. Mm. Why would she leave? So I'd like to just engage him in polite conversation, try and get a, a read on him. Where do you want me? Wherever you want to be. <laughs> I think when he says that, a complex sequence of expressions goes across my face. I'm going to roll my acting to see if I can convey to him just how terrifyingly excited I am to finally be centre stage when all those talentless cunts that I've watched all these years have performed on centre stage and done it so badly. And because I've rolled a 0-6 on my admittedly not very good acting of 33, that is, however, a very good... I say, um, you're enjoying this, aren't you? <laughs> I'm not just enjoying it. I'm beginning to wonder whether it's what I'm here for. I know that's madness, but don't you think it's a little strangely coincidental? Why were you drinking in the coach and horses? Listen, obviously, it's because I knew some interesting journalists who'd invited me down there that evening. Hmm. Everyone's always trying to write a book about the craze, well, they were back in those days. Hmm. Well, yes, I can't imagine it's the sort of uh, place someone like yourself would be drinking. Probably best avoided then, darling. I've avoided it like the plague. Right, I'm going to speak to this Niccolo fella. I don't want to go down to that cellar without you. No, no. That all stinks to high heaven as well. What does he mean, they found doors? You live in a house your entire life, your family, you live here for generations, and then there's a door you've never opened. What if they're kidnapping people? What if they're kidnapping people? They're trying to make funds. You know how this works with the Red Brigade and people like that? They're all trying to make money so that they can... And the Mafia. Yes, exactly. Old as the hills in these parts. Hmm, wouldn't surprise me. Get a wealthy American like Don in. Anyway, look, we're running ahead of ourselves. Yes. All right, well, I'll talk to Niccolo and then we'll reconvene, shall we? Good thinking. While you're doing it, why don't I just check the way down to the cellar? See, see what I can see. Good idea. See what's going on down there. I've read a few books about the Etruscans, I say, just adjusting my glasses. Well, that makes one of us. Yes, I might be able to, I might be able to spy something that uh, I could report back to Don, get his professional opinion on, darling. Good idea. All right, you go and do your thing. Yes, I'll keep it brief and breezy. Perfect. So I, I walk through to the kitchen and start looking for Niccolo. And somehow he has not heard... Don yelling, Niccolo, Niccolo. He's got some quite loud 70s pop music playing while he's sort of whipping up a tiramisu or something. Mm, lovely. Mm. Oh, I come in fanning myself from my fedora. Oh, it's just, it's just hot as a lizard down a rack. Oh, Robert, my, my good man. <laughs> did you have a nice lunch? Yes, yes. What did you, what did you do this morning? Where did you... Where did you um, uh, we went up to that church and looked around the basement. Yeah, very interesting. Is that the Chiesi? Mm. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, well, whew, well, it's all got a bit hot, isn't it? What time did Julia get back? She left us a bit early. Oh, I, I didn't see her. No? No, I've been in here. I, oh. Why do you ask? Oh, that's strange. Is she upstairs then? She must be upstairs, I presume. I don't know. I didn't know she came back. Ah, yeah. I see. Well, well. I'd have thought you'd have heard her when she came in. Mind you, you didn't hear us, did you? Uh, no, not until now. Yeah. I have this music up quite loud. Oh, I see, I see. Very good, very good. 
Yes, well, um, hmm. yeah, well, I just wondered, because I just was checking she's okay, because she felt the heat a bit, you know. Oh, yes, you can, especially your first day in a, you know, a hot country if you have not, not been used to it. Oh, yes, I know. Tell me about it. I'm sure she will get used to it. The rest of the week will, will not be a problem. Yes, well, one can only hope. And that's a shame about those other two ladies, Barbara and Crystal, was it? It is a real shame, but if they did not feel comfortable here, then I suppose they did the right thing by leaving. Did that Crystal girl say... Did she suggest anything besides the concerns about local security? I didn't even really speak to Crystal. I spoke to her mother, and um, no, it's it was mainly a, uh, concerns about the noises they'd heard last night. Right. Now, I must say, I slept like a log. I didn't hear a single thing. What sort of noises are you talking about? I think there was um, possibly a gunshot. Oh, gosh. In the street, and then some police activity, but it... Oh, dear. It, really nothing to worry about. I, I, don't, I don't want you to worry. No, I'm not worried in the slightest, to be honest. Um, no, I'm absolutely fine myself. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Pleased to hear. Can I get you a drink? Sorry, what time did you say Julia got back? I, uh, I, I don't know. I didn't know she came back. I want to do a psychology roll on him. <laughs> sure. Right, that is a... Oh, I could make that an extreme success if I spend two points of luck. Is it worth it, or should I leave it as hard? Um, yeah, you could... Yeah, it might be worth it. I spend the luck. Making that an extreme success. He... Didn't hear Julia come back, huh. but he's uh, you've you've made him nervous about something, mm. and it's not just you know the the nerves of being questioned. Yeah, yeah. Your comments about Julia coming back, and then your comment about the other two people leaving, something's there, has made him. You can almost see his brain whirring, and him starting to think about um, possibilities perhaps mm. so like as, as you're trying to f- figure out whether he's telling the truth about this he's it's almost like he's trying to figure out whether it's the truth does that make sense? I think so but he, did, but he didn't hear Julia come back hmm so I say uh, well I'm looking forward to uh, this evening's meal we're we eating the lasagna I take it Yes, if, if that suits, then... Well, suits me fine. I'll have a lasagna, very nice. And a bolognese, whatever, bragu last night was excellent. Good. Uh, I hope, you know, I hope we can continue to satisfy your palate through the rest of the week. Now, listen, I <clears throat> I have to say, I'm well, sorry if this is um, a bit forward of me, no? but um, your mother, uh, is she... Um, are you OK... You know, you said she wasn't very well. Yeah, she's, um... I think she's... Her mind is going a little. Oh, no. I'm sorry. She doesn't talk much, very much anymore. Uh, mm-hmm. Forgets things? Uh, can be a bit forgetful, yeah. Oh. And she gets tired in the evenings, especially. In the morning, she is much better. You saw this morning, she was, um, well quiet but yes yes how long has that been going on for then oh um it's hard to say it's a, a gradual thing but i suppose it's been maybe it's got worse the past few years two years maybe oh dear oh i am sorry to hear that you know, i'm i'm not very well myself oh mm. i'm sorry to hear that it's all right i've made my peace with it now is it a a serious condition Oh, yes, it's uh, incurable cancer, unfortunately. Oh. So I won't be around much longer. Robert, I'm, I'm very sad to hear it. I, I... Ah, don't worry about it. We've only just met. I've had a very rich, full life. I, well, I'm glad, you're, I'm glad you're, you know, spending your time doing things that you love. Me too. Me too. Can I get you a drink? Why not? One of those Campari jobbies would be good. Of course. And he uh, pours out two Campari and sodas. And I clink glasses with him and drink it. I go, well, if you ever need to talk about, you know, coming to terms with things. 
Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's very kind. No problem. No problem. Who knows? Could drop down dead here upstairs. <laughs> Let's hope not. I'm joking. I won't make that uh, be inconvenient for you, I imagine. It would be very sad for everyone. Except you've got all that basement space, eh? <laughs> you have a dark sense of humour, <laughs> Mr Hyde. <laughs> yeah. Well, I need a nap, if you'd excuse me. Oh, of course. Uh, yeah, be my guest. I rush back to Nicholas de Vere. <laughs> <laughs> great uh well we'll find out what nicholas has been doing in a minute but let's go back to the search upstairs sharon mm-hmm. you go into the next room which is don and julia's room and meanwhile he's going he's going through these guys rooms do the bedrooms have an on en- suite bathrooms or is there a bathroom a shared bathroom on the there is a shared bathroom i think the sort of master bedroom which um which robert ended up in i think has a has an ensuite and i think the others sort of share a bathroom i was just thinking is there one that i need to check in julia and don's room but no uh again i'd look on the bed i'd look under the bed look open the wardrobe doors just anywhere that might hold a (laughs) human-sized shape no human-sized shape in this room Hmm. i might i might check the uh the bedside tables so on uh, on the beds on uh, one of the bedside tables you assume next to Julia's side of the bed uh, there is her bag her little sort of clutch bag ah and had she she'd had that when we were in, went to the church earlier on well I don't know how uh, how closely you were paying attention so maybe give me a hmm Nin- 1970s flashback roll mm, it's not really intelligent it could be a retrospective spot hidden I'm going to go with a retrospective spot hidden to see whether you know whether she had it with her. An RSH. Mm. Well, I've absolutely smashed that in the ass. I've got a four and a 45. <laughs> Technical term. Wow. She didn't have it with her. Okay. Okay. So this isn't proof that she definitely came back. This isn't proof that she definitely came back, no. Uh, can I have a quick look in her bag, please? I think you've got time for a quick look. Uh, how... Well, tell me, are you are you doing it quickly or stealthily? Stealthily. Have you got any stealth? I've got a little bit of stealth. Genie, genie, ask to extend your uh, extreme success. Like spot hidden. Oh yes, it was an extreme success. Yeah. Okay. Um, how much stealth have you got? Please, can I extend my extreme success? Uh, Twenty-five stealth. Okay, I'll give you a bonus die for your stealth roll, Ooh. based on the fact that you did such a good. And you would have you would have succeeded just with a regular. So I feel like I ought to give you something. Oh, grazie, grazie, prior, grazie, grazie. prior of the basilica, grazie mille. Yes, that is an eighteen. Oh my God, you're rolling on fire! Ho, 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 ho. Fantastic. This is really good. So, in her bag, you find the sort of things that you would expect to find. Two things that really catch your eye mm. are um, a packet of medication and the brand name, the drug is Vendectin. Thank you. So I don't know whether you want to sort of make a no roll to see if you know what that is or whether you have any chemistry or anything like that or whether you just want to... I have biology, not chemistry. You might not know this because you haven't engaged Robert Hyde on what he does for a living, but he's he's got some chemistry. He is, sir. Uh, is a chemist. I think I might just might make a mental note of the name and then want to confer with the gentleman. Fine. Uh, what you do notice is that the packet is empty. And then the other thing that catches your eye are some leaflets in Italian. I don't know you have any Italian. I, I don't have any Italian. Okay. Uh, so the what you can see is a big, a couple of big words that say prima linea and then some words that you just don't understand okay but since your stealth was um a success you can if you wanted to pocket both those things yes please thank you please you can do and you've just managed to get them into your pocket when don comes through the door oh it says no sign of her no sign of her anywhere no i've uh, i've not seen her anything either let's pause there and pop downstairs again what was Nicholas doing, meanwhile? Anything or...? 
I was going to I was going to check to see what the downstairs approach was. I'm not necessarily going to go into the cellar, but I'm going to go down to the cellar if I can find the entrance. Yeah, so you're going to have a little investigate around the da- the downstairs area of the house. Um it's, you know, there's this big sort of uh kind of foyer area which which has the the sort of dining kind of dining room like this inside courtyard and the stairs upstairs are come out of this main room the kitchen off to one side and off to the other side are what look like a a couple of bedrooms mm. it's kind of classic pensione setup right it's like it's around a courtyard yeah and then a, a downstairs bathroom that looks pretty basic i'm willing to use stealth i'm willing to sort of sneak because i've done some I've done some pretty weird things in my time sneaking around people's houses, trying to. Right. Okay. Give me a give me a stealth give me a stealth roll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's part of the scoops trade is to sneak into someone's house, get a bit of gossip, find what's going on. <laughs> I've not done well. <laughs> got my forty. I've got my forty-two stealth. It's quite good, right? He's fallen down the stairs, <laughs> and I rolled a seventy-one. It's not my best. Okay. Disappointing. Um, I sort of know I'm being loud, so I'm thinking about pushing it because I'd like to not be found. I think I, I think I can get away with this one, so I'm gonna. I'm just gonna press on. I'm just gonna. I realise I'm being quite loud as I'm going down the stairs or whatever it is, or opening the door or whatever. And I just think I could always pretend that this is exactly where I'm supposed to be being lost. So I'll just use that. So I'll just press on. Okay. So you do, you sort of go, you've gone down that side and got the feeling that they are the bedrooms and the the bathroom. You can hear a, well, give me a listen. Nice. Well, that's good. That's an 18 on my 50 listen. So. You can hear a, a, what sounds like snoring coming from one of the bedrooms. Mm, encouraging. I'm assuming it's the mother. Or am I? Actually, I'll go to see. I'll go to see. I'll risk that. So where you sort of push the door open a, a little bit? Just a little bit of, like, is it the mother? I'm wondering whether I should make you push your stealth for that. Is that, is that, is that my push stealth? I am going to make you push your stealth, yeah. I, I'm happy to do that. I'm going to try and do that as quietly as I possibly can. Yeah. Because I think I need to know now mm. whether she's there or whether it's someone else. Because if it's someone else, that makes a big difference. That is a... F- 43 fail on my 42 stealth. Oh dear. Can't fudge it, Dan. Can't fudge it. I want to fudge that, but I'm like, shit. So as the, uh, as the door sort of creaks open, you can see that she stirs. It is her, but she's, she's lying, um, in the bed and, and she's naked. Oh, oh, shit. And as you push the door open, she sort of stirs. She doesn't fully awake. She she stirs and she says, Niccolo? But you look at her naked body lying there. Oh, no. And it's really, there's something wrong with it. There's something wrong with it. The thing that really, really gets you is her feet, actually. It's um, her, you know, you'd already noticed her weird sort of canine face. So I think in a way, in a way, if she'd been lying there and she was like a dog woman, it would have been less alarming. But her feet are almost like elongated hooves, as if her toes are somewhat fused together at the end. But they're also claw-like the end, like these long talons, really. Um, mm. and that's a sanity roll, please. Almost more gargoyle like, perhaps. Very gargoyle like. Shit done, shit done. I have passed my sanity, 33. Okay, one sanity point, please. More than fair, more than fair. I think it's a good, it's a good escape. And I mean, per- I don't know whether that's perhaps an involuntary reaction as well. I think there's, a, there's definitely involuntary. None of you know how bad my sanity is, do you? No. You've implied that it's not good. I told Dan this is the worst character I've ever rolled. 
As soon as I rolled it, I thought Joseph wouldn't stand for this. <laughs> I would have rolled again. I, I always give myself three. <laughs> and number three, I always go, like, this is the one you've got to play, dude, because you can't mess with fate. This the, He was really good, this guy. But I lost a shit ton of appearance. But I've passed that. I'm down to 67. Involuntary action. Yeah. Um, I think I back away. I physically back away, but I don't understand where space and time have gone in those moments. And was it a corridor and a, and a wall behind me? You've only really sort of stepped through the door. It, it almost opens straight out onto the... So you don't... It's not a, it's not a corridor or a wall. It's quite clear behind you. If that makes sense. So I, th- I think I just go straight back. Fine. Closing the door or leaving the door open? Uh, no, no. I mean, like, leaving the door, it's like, it's total evacuation. Uh, I back away, um, and whatever's behind me, I just I just basically charge into backwards. Fine. It might be that that's, like, the stairs. You sort of bump into the banister of the stairs. Well, I, you say I bump into the banister, I mean, do I, therefore, fall down the stairs? I mean... No, that, no. I think you're. I think you're fine. Okay, okay. But there's a moment there where I'm thinking, "Oh my god, I could have gone down the stairs. Uh, I could have totally." Yeah, and well, you make a bit of a racket, and, you, and again you hear her say, "Nicolo," and uh, you've got a bit more time because um, uh, Robert was having quite a long conversation. Yeah, there was. It was a quite. It was. It was an engagement. He did, he really committed. I was impressed by how much he committed. I really thought I was going to get an answer. So. um there's this moment where I think, should I try my 12% Italian? <laughs> uh, and then I, I don't do that. I think you should set another bitch on fire. <laughs> but nor do I, unfortunately and mistakenly, do I have the genius to think I will set the bitch on fire. But I think I immediately, now I really do head to the cellar. Okay. Because I'm thinking some kind of weird experiments go on. I want to see more of this. <laughs> I don't, want, I don't want to see more of it, but I'm thinking, are, are they taking people and doing weird things where they're injecting things into people's feet or something? I'm, my brain is trying to make sense of it, and, I, and it's, it's, it's essentially illogical. But I descend rather than ascend, because it's the opposite of what's been said to me back upstairs, which was, you know, Ascension Day. Mm. Fine. So you find this sort of door behind the stairs that goes into a, like an old sort of crumbly brick corridor and it's it's it gets quite dark at the end of the corridor you can't see any obvious electric lights and there's no natural light in this part of the house i'll take my lighter out okay fine so with your lighter you can see that there are some steps that sort of go down like proper stone steps it's not like makeshift and you keep on going Uh, i'm going to check to see if there's any um scratch marks on the walls no for you no there's no markings on the wall shit me I don't, I don't think I want to go down there on my own I mean there's one thing to feel like your dog has been maybe this is this is a setup. this is a setup. they found out I've lost my dog maybe Robert's part of it I'm gonna head back upstairs and find out what the fuck Robert's doing because maybe I'm some kind of weird elaborate plot but why me? Why me? I think I think in that moment I stop at the and I and I think I I rack my brains to understand that night at the Coach and Horses nine years ago, where I met Ronnie Cray's cousin, and I start thinking: Did I say something? Did I offend someone? Because I I I have the capacity to offend people because I tell the truth that they cannot handle. Two stars. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I give them a bad review because they're shit. <laughs> or worse, three stars. <laughs> well, oh, so mediocre, right? I mean, like, don't like arrive one side of the line or the other. Anything but in the middle. <laughs> three stars doesn't sell tickets. Listen, I mean, we all know the truth is a devere three stars is like a kind of scathing, scathing, a scathing, t- utterly scathing. It's closing notice. Uh, I'd like to flatter myself that it should be that, but no, obviously I don't have that power Mm -hmm. because it's the scoop and no one really cares. But they have to do the arts section because of one of the backers, Lester Goodman. He's a backer on it and and, they just, they have to deliver. 
Uh, apparently he's in his eighties, and he's just an American guy. And you like Quentin Letts, right? You you do the you do the theatre, the sport, the political punditry. <laughs> do like a parliamentary sketch. Yeah, I do. I do. I do loads. I do loads of stuff. But the one that I put my name to is the theatre stuff. Anyway. Uh, anyway, so there I am at the top of the stairs, going, "No, no, no! I can't do this without you." And what are you here for, Robert? What are you really here for? Are you here? Are you saying that to me? Well, you're not there, but I'm... Oh, right. <laughs> All right, I see, I understand. It's rhetorical, yes. What are you really here for? Theatrical characters, they're so confusing, I think, because it's like, they're so theatrical. And then I dash back upstairs, I think. Fine. Now that I know the way to here, that's what I need to know, and I'm going to bring him back here, and we're going to go down there together. Fine, and when you get back upstairs, you, you're sort of simultaneously confronted with Robert coming out of the kitchen and Niccolo's mother. Uh, I believe her name is Gabriella, but you don't know that. Niccolo's mother coming out of her bedroom, but clothed now with sort of house shoes on and a, a sort of little house coat around her. And she's walking slightly awkwardly, as if she has bunions. Or plantar fasciitis. And she just says, Niccolo? Robert comes out of the kitchen. Ah, oh, Nicholas, there you are. Ah, oh, ah, oh, Robert. Um, Signora, she's there with us, right? Hmm. Oh, cool. She looks at you kind of blankly. I, I step behind Robert so that he is between me and Gabriella Fabri, and I say, Signora Fabri, sono Signore De Vier again like she's just looking at you blankly and then she looks towards the kitchen Nicolo I whisper to Nicholas she has she has dementia it does look that way doesn't it and I look at him and there's a sheen of sweat on my face that suggests that that's not what I think at all but I'm very happy to believe what you're saying in this moment uh, now presumably if we were to go back down it would be obvious that we were heading towards the cellar Potentially, but I wonder whether, realistically, this is the point at which um, Don and Sharon might have come back down from upstairs. My compromise would be this. I, I, I point down the steps and I say, that's the entrance to the cellar. Dear man, right there. Did you go down? No, but... But I saw something. What? And I, 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 I look really shifty. I, my, my face is pushed. I, I pull a very strange expression. And I say, I don't want to talk about it here. Maybe over a stiff drink. All right. If Julia doesn't turn up, I'm going to go somewhere tonight. I'm going to speak to someone I know in the city. If something strange has happened, he's the sort of person who's got his finger on the pulse. Listen, either Sharon's the best actor I've ever seen, and I know actors, or she's not part of this. We should take her with us. Oh, right. Well, I'm suggesting I go alone. No, I don't mean to that. You do what you have to do. But whatever happens... I don't think she's part of it, is what I'm saying. Right. I can tell you right now, I'm not part of it, darling. Well, what I will say is this. I spoke to Niccolo about her coming back, and he definitely didn't hear her turn up. But, I don't know, I, I felt like my asking questions was making him nervous. They're definitely hiding something in here. No, they're definitely hiding something. Don't trust the mother. The mother? Mrs. Fabri Senior. She's not what she appears to be, I say. And I look at him, and I and I do a sort of impersonation. I do my impersonation of of Olivier retreating from Ophelia. <laughs> not in the film version, in the stage version that I saw as a young man. And I, I back away from him with my long finger over my lips. And it's it's the, it's properly theatrical. I raise a hand to my forehead and I say, she is not what she seems. And I retreat into the shadows of the room. I nod to myself and say to myself, oh, I see. 
She knows more than she lets on. <laughs> Meanwhile. No sign of her anywhere. No, I've, I've not seen her anything either. Okay, I think it's time that we go downstairs and try to find Niccolo and maybe take it from there. See the police. Uh, yes. Use his phone or, or head straight there. I think it will be the logical next step just to check that the, the gentlemen haven't found her and, and then we will sure. take it from there. It's going to be all right, Don. It's going to be okay. Yeah. There's always a logical explanation. That's what my Brian used to say. And yeah. Nine times out of ten, he was right. Okay, th- thanks. One time out of ten, of course. It wasn't, wasn't right, but... What? What do you mean? <laughs> no, I'm being silly. It's all going to be fine. Come on, downstairs, let's go. Okay. He's really shaken up and uh, you both head downstairs where you find um, Robert and Nicholas and uh, Gabriella Fabri, Nicolo's mother, in like a sort of dressing gown, house coat type thing, bare legs and, and shoes. Is she wearing a signet ring? Uh, she is not, no. I'm cool. Checked every room. She's nowhere. We've, we've got to, we've got to call the police. Nicolo! Oh, I, I had a little look downstairs and I can't see her. Right, we need to we need to use Niccolo's phone then. I think we need to call the police. It's the next logical step. Well, well, well. Um, do we need to in- involve the? Um, I, I've I've read some articles about the police um, at the moment, and oh, damn it! Maybe we should just breathe a little calmly and 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 t- talk about some possible reasons why she might have left, dear man, dear boy. All right. She's not taking her belongings. They're all still upstairs. She, oh she hasn't done a runner. Why? Why would she? Why would she do a runner? What did Niccolo say? Oh, he, he didn't have much to say. He, he just said he didn't hear her come back. Maybe, maybe she never made it back. Maybe, um, maybe she got taken on the square, or maybe she fell. Well, she made it ac- halfway across. That's for certain. I remember seeing her there. Didn't we? Yes, yeah, I, I saw her across the square. Not, I didn't see her through the doors, but. No, no, that's true. And you said some of her possessions are upstairs? Yeah. Yeah, her, her purse is up there. She, she didn't take it with her. Ah, oh, right, right, right. Her handbag's there, yeah. Ah. Well, what do you suggest we do? Could it not be possible? Could it not be possible? She was on her way back and then got distracted by something. By what? I don't know. She could have um, seen an interesting building she wanted to have a look at and she's, don't know, she might have, uh, I don't know, witnessed a crime and she's talking to the police right now, reporting it, giving a statement, or, um... Uh, yeah, I guess... Um, anything, anything could happen. Uh, maybe, and he runs to the front door and sort of opens the front door and just has a look out onto the square. W- while he's doing that, I say, Signora Fabri, is she, she's still in the room, right? She's Yeah, she's standing there looking quite confused. S- Signora Fabri, um... Oh. Niccolo? Gosh, how do you say this? See, si, um... Uh, uh, Cucina. Uh, uh, penso il, um... D- oh, gosh, it's so difficult. Um, in the kitchen, in Cucina, penso, uh... She, she sort of looks where you're pointing and, and, and sort of shuffles off towards the kitchen. See, si, si, and all the time I'm keeping Robert between... Fine. Uh, like, even if it's, like, weird, I'll just sort of... I'll, I'll use him as the sun huh? in the centre... Are you all right, Mr. Devere? You've gone very pale. Have I? Have I? And my hand goes up to my face like I'm in a melodrama. Kelsey Breeze. You look a bit sweaty. Oh, gosh, have I? And, my, and the back of my hand goes onto my forehead. You're not ill, are you, sir? I say, oh, I'm so sorry. I, sometimes I just show my feelings. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, this is crushing. This is crushing. Um, no, I do apologise. Um, but I'm going to wait till she's gone. Even though I don't think she can understand English. But I'm going to wait till... Gabriella Fabri's gone. I'm not entirely sure she can understand Italian. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. But she might understand things far deeper and stranger. Uh, the, is he, is um, Don still at the door? Yeah. Can you see anything, Don? This is full of people. I, I don't know. She, 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 she could, she could, have got taken by anyone. It's, it's so busy out there. Well, if if not the police, what about um, the consul, the consulate? Yeah, we should, we should, should we start with the police? Oh, God damn it, I know they're in with the fascists. No, no, I, I, I look at, I look at Mr. Hyde, Mr. Robert Hyde, and I say, no, I don't think we should call the police. Do you think that, Robert? No, never trust the, um... Foreign police. 
foreign police. I've had some bad, bad experiences. No offence meant to uh, the, our lovely hosts. But I, I, do think, I do think we need to seriously talk. I, I know what we said was a little naughty at lunch, Don, but the two of you do seem to be very well, you know, into each other, as you young people would say. And it's a surprise that she should leave, therefore. Yeah, I know. I don't know why you keep making these suggestions like she might have... Well, wait a second. People have lovers all over the world, remember? Let's let's think very, very calmly. As, as Sharon would say, there's a logical reason for everything. She said, she said it at breakfast this morning. Well, I mean, who's going to turn down this man, though? So, so true. So, well, well, yes, good point. Well, Don, if I was in Julia's shoes, I would not have any other lovers anywhere. Thank you very much. He sort of looks at you and is momentarily... <laughs> Disgusted? Somewhat, somewhat sort of confused. <laughs> <laughs> He's in an emotionally vulnerable state, so I think you might have, might have made a little dent on him. <laughs> that was your aim. <laughs> I tell you what... As I mentioned earlier, to those who were present, I can't remember who, <laughs> that's a problem for the editor. I could, Donald, I could have a word with um, someone I know who lives in the area. They might have um, be able to sort of keep their ear to the ground for us. Yeah? I haven't spoken to them yet. It, we we go way back. Haven't seen each other in years, etc., etc. But if you give me a minute, I could leave a note for them. Uh-huh. Yeah, anything you could do to help, that would that would, that would be great. One second, then. We should tell Niccolo. No. No, 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 we shouldn't tell Niccolo that I've contacted anyone. All right, but maybe we should get him to call the police. That's fine. That's fine. You can do that if you want. But you mustn't tell anyone that I've contacted anyone on your behalf. That goes for all of us. All right. All right, Mr. Hyde. My friend's very per private. He's very private, you see. He doesn't like to be involved in things. Is he uh, like a... Like a, like a dick? I beg your pardon? I mean like a PI, you know? A, oh, yes, of oh. course. Private detective, a, a investigator. Thank goodness. Wonderful, wonderful parlance. No, not necessarily that. It's just that he's... um. If you're going to involve the police, I know that he will not like being dragged into that. So probably best to just keep him on the sidelines, as it were. The periphery is a bit of extra intelligence, if you will. Sure, sure. I, maybe we need to... Calm down a bit. I guess she's only been gone. She's only been gone like an hour, maybe. Here, Donald. And I reach into my pocket and I go, I have a Valium. <laughs> Giving them out like sweets in this scenario. <laughs> They're very good. They're very good. And I'll have one as well. What, what's it gonna What's it gonna do to me? Just one of these will it knock me out? Or no, 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 no. Relax you. I pull four brandies from from the drinks cabinet <laughs> and down them all and say, knock it back with this. I think we should all we should all stiffen our uh, nerves. They go well together, do they? Valium and brandy. They go very well together. Well, when in Rome, indeed. All right, and he knocks it back and and knocks back the brandy. You might start to dissociate slightly, but that's a good thing. <laughs> Embrace it. <laughs> you might start to what? Who might start to dissociate? Where are you? <laughs> Who are you talking to? You're all figments of my imagination. I'm going to go and get the note paper. Excuse me one moment. I go up the stairs. I, I'm I'm going to go and speak to Niccolo. And um, um you, you, you speak to Niccolo. Oh, Robert, just one thing. What? Robert, Sharon, I, I, think, I think Mrs. Fabry might be seriously ill. Why? Why do you say that? What do you mean, seriously ill? Well, I thought, I was just following him, Hunch, and I thought while you were upstairs, I say to Sharon, and while you were speaking to Niccolo, uh, I, I thought I'd just check downstairs, just ever so quickly. And I, well, I opened a door, and she was lying on the bed, and... Oh, her feet. Her feet. They were... Oh, they weren't right. They just weren't right. So, something's been done to them, I think, or I don't know. Anyway, listen. It's... I. Mm, what I'm trying to say is, I think she might be seriously ill. Like, possibly some sort of genetic problem. And, well, I don't know. There's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot going on, but I noticed that the two of you were very dynamic when we left that Masonic Lodge, or whatever it was, restaurant devoted to the cause of Masonic Lodge... And I, I just can't help but think that there's all sorts of cultural strangeness going on, and I wanted to tell you. <laughs> um, it's not that I disapprove of it, but I don't understand it, and that's why I'm very cautious about involving the police, Robert. Cultural strangeness is a beautiful Lovecraftian euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> and the emphasis on cult as well didn't go unnoticed. <laughs> yeah. Gentlemen, I, I, on a similar note, I want to show you something that I found in... in in Crystal and Barbara's room, and then uh, Sharon pulls the um, Gideon's Bible. 
Just to check, this is all happening after Don has gone into the kitchen to speak to Nicola, right? Yeah. He doesn't need to hear this. Fine. She quickly pulls the, the Bible out from her from her pocket. She goes, I, this was in the bedside table. and Yeah, they do that everywhere. No, 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 but look. And she opens it and it shows them the underlined words that say, leave, unsafe, festival, get out, darkness, and other other words of a similar genre. Ugh. What do you think it means? I snatch the Bible up and throw it on the floor <laughs> and I go, Ooh. I don't think she was even blind, you know. I'm, I'm sick of these charlatans. <laughs> it makes it gives me the fucking creeps. Oh, yeah, come in here, right under a underline a lot of, of buoy in a bloody Bible and then fuck off. I bet she'll turn up. She'll turn up or she'll have someone turn up for her in a week's time who will say all this stuff, all we've got to give me some money and they'll fiddle us. It's a scam. That's what they're up to. Those pair, those pair should know better. Well, how do we know that they went of their own free will? I, I bend down and pick up the Bible during that marvellous speech. Well, they had all this time to underline, to flick through the Bible and find all the right words to underline to give people the creeps. I couldn't stand the eye, a pair of them. I, I flick through the Bible and look at the words and roll my occult. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, damn it. I knew it wasn't very much. What's happened? 96 on a 25. Oh, that is a fumble, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That'll do it. It seems it seems a little harsh, but okay. Here we are. Here um, we are. So you um... don't look now. <laughs> what? Why would they be underlined? It doesn't mean anything to you what these words that have been underlined. But as you're reading the book, as you're flicking through the pages, you remember how important your faith was to you as a child. Mm. Were you were you brought up Catholic? In fact, I, I read the word onanist, <laughs> dog underlined. <laughs> Dead, underlined. I was a high Anglican, high Anglican, of course. Right. With loved all the bells and bells and spells and smells. Yeah. Which explained that long um, uh, and ardent affair I had with the works of uh, of the great Irish dramatist, not Singh, obviously, uh, you know Oscar Wilde. Uh, and yeah, I think his his leanings have always been. He's he's longed to have a passionate clinch with someone in the vestry. Never never got away with it. I I, I see. I th- but I think I think at this moment you you feel suddenly a, a desperate need to be close to your to your faith. You feel like actually this this book is maybe is maybe making you feel a little bit more secure. Which actually makes perfect sense, doesn't it, with what he found in the uh, edicule? Quite. And the, and this um, dog-headed totem statue, little statue that he has that he got in the in the Middle East. I think perhaps this is the moment where you feel like uh, you've you've never been so close to your faith, and it's all 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 the different passions in your life have sort of collided in this city. Mm. Uh, your your obsession with dogs, <laughs> your religious faith, which you've always struggled with. Yes, uh, there's there's something that something that links them in the city, and you really really have to get close to that. Of course, of course, uh, of course. It's, I always thought it was to do with the cooking, huh. but but it's not about the cooking at all, is it, Mister Devere? I'm here because of the Chiesa. Oh, all right. I just I didn't admit it to myself. Looking at these words. They're using it as some sort of divination practice, but that's... And I slam the book shut in a dramatic action to punctuate. That's not the point at all. It's that church over there. It's it's not... It's like I said to you, Robert, it's not a coincidence. It's, it's like we've been called here, all of us. Well, speaking of not coincidences, I just want to show you, gentlemen, Mr. Hyde, Mr. Devere, t- I found these two things in Julia's personal bag. Don't say anything to Don, but I had a look... Just in case there was a note, a letter, something that might explain a disappearance. Uh, is either of you a medical man? I've got this, and she pulls out the box of Benedictine. Uh, I shall roll my chemistry. Uh, as he looks at it and she hands it over to him, I say, yes. That's a hard, hard success. Oh, oh. And I walk straight past Don, straight out of the building. But you Don't walk past Don because he's still in the kitchen with Nicolette. Oh, sorry. I, no, yeah, because he looked at the front. Sorry, sorry. I don't walk straight past Don. I walk straight out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> Take this or leave it. You, you might have, um, you might have your own 
plan. That was a fly, by the way, not me going mad. You might have your own plan as to what you want to do, but if you feel the need to make a, make a religious, a big religious gesture, mm. we are in the middle of a religious festival, and the uh, the uh, Madonna di San Luca is down is in town. Or there's the pilgrimage that you could make up to the Basilica di San Luca. You don't have to do either of those things. I don't mind whether you do or not. But if you want to do something other than just go back to the church, which you've already been at, it might be that that makes most sense to you because that's where you've seen the canine iconography. I would just leave that with you as thoughts to play in your mind. I, I think I know exactly how to play that. Okay, fine. So thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that with you. But I, I don't want to interrupt there. Yeah, sorry for interrupting. And I'll, I'll, I'll pick up. There's no, but obviously it's like it's a fumble, so I have to follow it up in a, in some context. So, but I'll, I'll come back. I'll come back to you on it, Dan. This, no, it makes sense. Great. Okay. Um, so sorry, I interrupted. Robert, were you rolling your chemistry? Yes, I got a hard success. Okay, great. So, um, bendectin. It is um, a commonly prescribed medicine for morning sickness. Oh, huh. Sharon was right all along. Mm. Oh my God, she was right. Preggers. Fuck, I'm brilliant. <laughs> also, uh, Nicholas was right. He said last session, he said to Don, uh, and I'm just reminding you this because it was last session. You said to Don, is she pregnant? <gasps> well, Sharon, what that is, Ben Dictin, that there, <laughs> it's the, um, <clears throat> it's a nausea suppressant, you see. It's to, it's for the, it's for morning sickness. <gasps> <gasps> she was pregnant. Well, yeah. She is pregnant. <laughs> she is pregnant. Well, is she? Well. Open the packet and let's see how many she's had. I think it's empty. She's as knocked up as... Um, <laughs> as my front door. As a bell tower. <laughs> <laughs> knocked up as my front door. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, oh, I don't know what... I don't know what Nicky was on about. He lost me there. No, he's gone. Is he all right? Probably not. <laughs> he seems mentally ill, but he is a theatre critic. <laughs> right. Excuse me. <laughs> as you say that, as you say, excuse me, I come dashing back in through the the door and I say... See? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot. They've left because of the festival, but I'm here for the festival. I think we all are. Mr DeVere, but... I came here for the food course. No, I... And if anyone says otherwise, well, they're wrong. I know, of course... I came here for an adventure and by gum, I'm getting one. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more. If you'll excuse me... I need to go and tend to something upstairs and write a note. I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. Stride up the stairs. Mr DeVitt, I can see you're very busy. I wonder if you could just take a look at this leaflet for me, because I know your Italian is, is the best out of the lot of us. Oh. W what does this say? Hardly. Don's the man, but of course, yes, let's... I'll see what I can make of it. Actually, sometimes my reading is a little better than my speaking, I'll admit. How is your Italian? 12%, I think. Let me just double-check that. Using a digital character sheet. Ooh... Uh, language. Language? You must forgive me. It's just when I picked up that Bible, you see, and as I look at it, I'm, so, I'm saying this as I look at the leaflet that Sharon hands me, I, um, I, I, I simply felt this deep compulsion to connect to my... I don't know why I'm saying this to you, Sharon. There's something about you so... so unguarded, so honest, so true. Unfucked up. <laughs> yes, unfucked up. If only I could write that. It would be such a wonderful description. Oh, did I ever tell you about watching Gielgud's performances as um, Richard III again, apparently? Everyone's Richard III. I, I sense you're about to. Oh, no, no, no. It's too long a story for a while. I'm trying to translate Italian. Hmm, that's a shame. Ah, hmm. It does look a little prima, prima linea. Hmm. Well, that's the first line. But the rest of it is it's completely unknown to me, the rest of it, I'm afraid. And I'm sure it's crucial to understanding the whole thing on my 67 on a 12. Uh, I'm not going to push a roll on a 12%. No, not at all. I, I, well, I appreciate you looking at it. Thank you. And Sharon takes it back from him. It's fine. I think just the fact that you both had a look at it so carefully, you, you can't make out the text, but the, the iconography on it is uh, very clearly left-wing, socialist, communist, maybe perhaps, perhaps militant c communist. Oh, but wait, now I think about it. Muscles and sickles. Doesn't that make you think of the um, the Soviet Union? It does a bit, yeah. It's, that sort of, it's almost like, it's like that, I don't know what the Cyrillic font is, but it's got a ring of it, don't you think? A whiff of the Stalinesque. 
about it. <laughs> As of course I des- I described um Walter de Pomfret's uh production of Cherry Orchard. <laughs> <laughs> the Cherry Orchard. <laughs> I was going to go for some Ibsen, but yeah, no, it's, it's, Cherry Orchard's stronger, stronger. At this moment, Don comes out of the kitchen. I don't know whether whether you're, you're you're bothered by the fact that you're looking at this leaflet when he comes out, whether you want to hide it away or yes, I think I I think I I snatch it away and stuff it in a pocket. I'll let you do that. Uh, and, and as you do that, I go. <gasps> oh, uh, um, oh, sorry. Mm. Niccolo says uh, he says he'll call the police, but. Uh, I don't know whether I believe him. He said, he said they were busy. He said they'd be busy with the festival, and and and, and we should leave it. We should, we should wait until tomorrow. That doesn't sound right. No, no. Here, have another brandy. Well, I, that's what I said, and he said he'd give him a call. But I wonder whether we should. Maybe I should just head over there. Do you think I should head over there to the police station? I think for your own peace of mind, w- wouldn't do you any harm to go there in person. Yes. All right. Yeah, I think I should. I think I should. But but what about Robert's friend? Shouldn't we give him a little bit of time? Why, why not both? Belt and braces, right? So long as they don't know about each other, I think it's probably best that you leave Mr. Hyde out of it. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. I, I heard what he said. I, I, I'm not one to get involved in someone else's business. I think you can mention our names, but I think it's possibly best that Robert is left out of it. And indeed his friend. Robert, do you need to tell me what you're doing upstairs? Yes, probably. And do you, do you mind if these guys here? Hmm. I don't want to make it like, you know, a Russian situation, but if, if there's a secret that you still want to maintain... The Russian situation? Well, actually, no, there is something. There is one detail that I need to... Fine. Why don't we take a break here, but me and Don will take a break just like two minutes after you guys. So the way I'm thinking about it is I've probably been given a contact somewhere in... Bologna, who I don't really know, but I've been told, go to this cafe, you can leave a note with them uh, at the cafe, and they'll pass it on when he comes in, or her, or whoever. Mm -hmm. And they've got, like, some sort of code name, but, like... Mm -hmm. So I think I go upstairs. Now Now I've got Don's map. I lay it out on my desk real quick, and I have a look to see where this, um... Who am I looking for? The chief of police. Yeah. So I, I'm going to check where the police station is, mm-hmm. you know, the headquarters, the police headquarters, sort of quickly have a rough guess of the distance from there to where I am, quickly circle any landmarks nearby, like things with towers. I won't spend long doing this, just whatever, whatever's like in the vicinity. And then, um, and then I, I try and see where this cafe is that I've been sent to and see how to get there, basically. Okay, great. And I might put the signet ring in my briefcase. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So that's what I do. Fine. And I write a note to this guy, say or contact, saying, um, "I'm here. The place I'm staying." And then I write, "What do I know Julia's surname?" Uh, I think you believe it to be Benson. So I write Julia Benson? Question mark. Any ideas? Question mark. And then I say. Um, shall we meet question mark I will check for post inverted commas tomorrow <laughs> 